Hello and welcome to Compute Grid, a peer-to-peer -peer computing platform for GPU resource sharing. My name is Alyssa and I'll be your guide today. Let us first begin by creating an account, if you haven't already, by clicking the Sign Up button. From here, you may log in with a Google account or any other email account you may have. Once you log in, all new users will be prompted to accept the Terms of Service. From there, you can see that all new users also start with the balance of $1 to help get them started. From here, we can navigate to the dashboard to see tutorials, quick action links, and our available GPUs. We may also click All Instances to see available GPUs. From here, to start one, we'll just click on one we like and start instance. Now this process may take a few seconds or a few minutes, but we, will be, but we will be redirected to our instance once the setup process is complete. Now that my instance process has completed, I can now see the instance detail page. Here we can see information from earlier, such as our RAM, our CPU cores, along with new information such as our start time and runtime. We are now able to either to click on different workflows. Let us click the SDXL tab. From here, our users are familiar with the terminals and the SSH process. We have some steps listed here for you. For other users, though, who may not be as familiar or as comfortable, we offer a one button click for you, and as we'll be using today. So let's go ahead and click Launch SDXL. From here, we can see that it is actually doing all the commands listed above for us, just in a much simpler way. And just like that, we have not only rented instance, but also set up and install the SDXL and are able to open up to Comfy UI. When we open it up, we are greeted by the default workflow. If we go ahead and click Q prompt, we're able to see the workflow start and our default image appear. But what do all these nodes mean? Let's go through them real quick. We have the load checkpoint node, which lets us select a stable diffusion checkpoint model. Today, we'll just be using the base model. From there, we see it connected to two nodes called clip, text, and code. This top one is our prompt, and the one below that is our negative prompt. Below that, we see a node titled empty latent image. Here we can control the width and height of our image in pixels, along with the number of images created per batch. All of these are connected to the case sampler. Here we begin with a random seed value and are able to control how the seed should change after each generation. Beneath that, we have values to control this. how the, bleh. Beneath that, we have values to control how many steps we are taking to create our image, the name of our sampling algorithm, a scheduler to control how the noise level should change in each step, and lastly, a denoise value to control how much of the initial noise should be erased, with one meaning all. So, let us now create a different image. For example, let us create a cat flying on a magic carpet. When I click Q prompt, I get various different images. Let's go ahead and stick with this one. Let me go ahead and change my seed value to zero and change it to be fixed. From here, I can increase the steps to increase the detail and then also change the configuration value. Let's look for a cat on a magic flying carpet. 
Let us remove this border first. I do not want any borders on my cat image. Perfect. Let me keep this seed value and keep it fixed. From there, let me adjust my steps and my configuration value. From there we see we have our base seed that has now been configured and stepped changed. I can continue adjusting the steps and configuration levels until I get exactly what I'm looking for. Let's bring that back down a little bit. And just like that, we have created an account, rented and started up an instance, and we're able to create an AI image using ComputeGrid.